Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India A large segment of practice in the category of folk painting is still ephemeral in nature which is created on mud walls and floors with removable paints. The painting done on textile base or on paper are also not of a great permanence in terms of the method and materials that are used traditionally. The reason is not the unavailability of the more permanent medium, but the prevalent principle of the um, of keeping the practice fleeting and to pass on the trend by repeating and reproducing. Folk paintings embody creative freedom in its um, execution being disassociated with the political commissioning or any kind of political imposition on them. Uh, that holds obligation of reaching out the common people uh, and to also proliferate the knowledge of social causes to them. Ephemeral drawings are made within the bounds of specific rules and guidelines for color and form delineations. The artist then skillfully and wisely combine their experiments to the existing iconography. The guidelines related to the myths and legends are not always written, but passed on through generations as canons of uh, the strictly followed uh, tacit knowledge. Kalamelitu in Kerala is part of a ritualistic performance conducted by the drama community combining drum beats, dance and chanting using anthropomorphic depiction of the deities. Ground paintings are formulated on folk foundation, but often features images close to classical dance performance of Kathakali. Use of color in spite of being aesthetically impeccable are mandatory that represent conceptuality and emotion. The five colors are corresponded to the attribute of each deity. They use rice powder for white color, pounded curcuma roots for yellow, extracts of acacia leaf for green, mixture of curcuma and soaked lime for the color red and burnt paddy for black. The Ambalavasis, meaning temple inhabitants, performs the main worship of Ayappan as the prime deity. Pulluvans are offered to the Naga cult. The Parayans, known to be the awful enchanters, worship local deities that probably do not belong to Hindu pantheon. The worshippers bring the cult to life by means of specific mudras, which are the hand gestures, chants, lyrics and drum beats, offering of flower, essences, harvests and pick into the tra trance like experience for the participants to a level of satisfaction ending the ritual by sweeping away the ground painting. The gesture is a metaphor of the world's transience characteristic to address fertility. Interestingly, the rituals of Kalampattu, Kurutini Pattum, Malaya Ratyam, Pulluvan Pattum support tribal medicine and health care. They often perform rituals of this kind to relieve a pregnant woman from the evil that causes miscarriage and sterility. 
the act of exorcism involves in waking the and destroying an image of the great artistic expression impacts the patient psychology and fastens the recovery to a great extent by means of its visual impact. In Tamil Nadu, the floor paintings are called kolam. Kolam patterns are created on floor with flowing rice powder by joining or surrounding dots in complex geometric and organic formations. Kolam is associated to the Pongal festival uh, that is a new harvest ceremony and performed on a regular basis by the woman community. In Kerala, the analogous ephemeral practice performed by men is known as mandala and kalam. They are associated with yantra and mandala from tantric foundation celebrating the goddess Ayapam. They are associated with yantra and mandala from tantric foundation celebrating the goddess Ayapan, the lord of Sabarimala, Bhadrakali and Naga cult. Yakshi Yaksha, Gandharva in Kalamapattu, Kuruntini Pattum, Malaya Pattam and Pulluvan Pattum and then Katan and Bhutam or the evil spirits, God for some by Kutti Kattanatam and Karim Bhutata Mankali. The classical influence of the theme based on texts ranging from fables to epics. 12th century AD, the central political powers of India underwent a decline, marking an obvious dearth of royal patronage for large scale projects except for a few temple structure constructed in Rajasthan, Bengal and Odisha. For example, Dilwara temple the, of Mount Abu, Rajasthan and Terracotta temples of Bengal and Odisha. Though Muslim rulers did not support the initiatives of sculptural structures, but the period contributed gloriously to the Indian art with treasures of illustrated religious manuscripts from Hindu, Buddhist and Jain sects. The illustrated punti were created in Bihar and Bengal in eastern India under the tutelage for Pala dynasty kings who were Buddhists and in Rajasthan and Gujarat of western India in Jain miniature style. They are examples of beautiful calligraphy and illustrations art done on palm leaves. Seen in the picture are the two different categories, one from uh, the Pragya Paramita Sutra text and these are the size of the palm leaves where uh, the scripts uh, were written and illustrated. Rajput miniatures and Mughal painting reached their pinnacle during 16th to 19th century AD. Stylistically, Rajput paintings are reminiscent of Ajanta murals combined with the sensibilities of folk painters, whereas Mughal painting added Persian flavor to the Rajput miniatures. Folk artists pulled necessary influence from the illustrated texts and narrative panels on the temple relief sculptures. They exchanged the mainstream sensibilities as they wished. It is also speculated that the folk painters were often outsourced to royal courts on a trial basis wherever the court had a dearth of manpower with no evident success. There are mentionings that when uh, as I told the earlier story where the group of Jain monks they had to move to the southern India. Uh, during the famine because of uh, many crises, uh, the other people who stayed back, they lost their memory due to malnutrition and then when the other 
group uh, returned back after the famine when everybody uh, came back to a, a normal state, uh, they realized that many of the texts which were orally spreaded got lost due to the uh, lack of memory. So, in that particular time they felt that uh, they need to rescue the text from uh, getting lost forever. And in that particular time they needed more manpower to write and illustrate all those uh, scripts uh, from the oral tradition to the uh, written manuscripts and they needed lots of people to uh, help them out in that task. Uh, it was uh, it, it's popularly known that a group of Patichitrakar from Bengal and uh, from other provinces they were called and commissioned they were told to uh, follow the rules of Jain miniature painting and uh, paint them uh, or illustrate all those Jain texts in their own ways, but they could not do it with some satisfaction. Uh, because they were so used to the freedom that they enjoyed that they could not work under any pressure or any uh, timeline, any deadline. And uh, that is one reason they were uh, expelled from that place also. Uh, it was also another thing that we get to know when we visit places like Raghurajpur in Odisha that uh, the communities who live there, they have surnames called Maharana and Maharana is not a common uh, uh, surname in Odisha. So, these are the group of people who were uh, commissioned by the king of Odisha and they were all called there uh, in Odisha from Rajasthan. Uh, they were all painters from the western India who were uh, called and they were also sent by some of the western Indian king uh, as uh, you know as, as the um, evidence of their friendship and good relationship and they came here and now they settled back and the kind of work that they do that has a lot of western Indian influence in the east. Uh, so, there had been amalgamation of the traditional art with the folk and minor art, uh, but this is for true that uh, these are based on different stories and different facts which are not written anywhere properly. Local artists of Gujarat who were trained in Jain miniature style of art were brought to Mughal court during Akbar's rule and they added new dimension to the prevailing style with local features like use of bright and bold primary shades of colors and for the figurings a complete profile or three quarter view with protruded eyes typically of Jain miniature style. But when the practice of Jain miniature painting faced a crisis due to the lack of artists, the folk painters could not make up for the deficiency. For the strict rules of paintings and pressure of mass production refrained them from experimenting the same level of artistic freedom that they, they were used to. Perhaps that was a cause for their periodical expulsion from their own community. This caused them to convert their religion to Islam, but intrinsically they reminded they remained, but intrinsically they remained neither Hindu nor Muslim with free access to both religious households. In Bengal, their religious identity is a matter of a great exception. They practice the um, namaz, they also propagate namaz as the compulsion for Islam and paint pictures of Hindu deities narrating Hindu sagas with equal enthusiasm. They claim that they belong to a religion of their own as the special children of God Vishwakarma. In Brahma Vaivarta Purana, the ancient text, there is an indication of how the artist community came into being. Lord Vishma, Vishwakarma and Apsara Gratachi fell in love and perennially took birth to unite 
and that resulted to the birth of their nine sons Malakara, flower sellers, Karmakara, blacksmith and carpenters, Shankakara, conch shell carvers, Kumbhivaka or Tantuvai, the weavers, Kumbhakara, the potters, Kangshakara, the metalwork artisans, Sutradhara, the carpenters, Chitrakara, painters and Swarnakara, the goldsmiths. Out of those nine sons, Brahmins cursed three of them. Sutradhara refused to collect wood for sacrificial fire, Swarnakara for stealing money from a Brahman and Chitrakara made a painting which was defective and not according to the Brahman's order. Parushurama's shloka further supports this fact stating that deviation from the normal form has led the Patuas to be exiled by the curse of Brahman society. Vyati Karmena Chitranangam Sadhya Chitra Kareshta Patita Brahma Shapena Brahmanancha Kopita. The reference uh, is taken from the published materials in the catalogues and interviews of researchers and curators of the Guru Sadadat Museum, Kolkata. However, from the very mentioning of non conformity to a rule, is suggestive that there existed rules. Vishnu Dharmottara Purana is another text written around the same time little before the common era with mentions about canons of paintings. So, it may be assumed that the painters were abiding by those norms to some extent. In Bengal, the reality is that the Patuas are considered untouchable in the society. Most of the stories related to their existence end with some clue of the painters being expelled from the from some reason or the other. And the entire uh, communal understanding is very complex and uh, intricate. They are highly respected by their admirers. At the same time, they are quite uh, well known in their um, artistic uh, establishment. This is also true that uh, they try to be as ignorant as possible about their religious identities. Uh, they enjoy the two different kinds of names which are Hindu and uh, Islamic at the same time. Uh, they all have a Hindu pet name where they have a formal um, uh, Muslim name often. So, these are the things which are very personal and that is connected to the uh, social structure of that um, their living and regular uh, habitual practices, but it does not really cause much of a disturbance as far as their art practices are concerned. Rather, it creates a new dimension to their artworks where the subject matters are chosen not only for their religious identities, but because of their storytelling richness. The characters are taken from mythologies uh, regardless of the uh, religion and they are chosen and hand picked uh, to establish certain characteristics uh, and identities of those people uh, to pass on some messages. And that makes it more interesting. There is a myth that an ancestor of the present day Patuas once drew the portrait of Mahadeva, the Lord Shiva, the great god of Hindu, without seeking his permission. And that is just a local saying. After completing the drawing, the artist apprehended that the Lord Shiva would be offended and angry and that may lead to some disaster. 
because he is the lord of destruction. He is calm and he seldom gets angry, but once he is angry, he can destroy the world and that is how it goes on. So, the painter did uh, what he did was he hid his paintbrush inside his mouth as Mahadeva came by. Mahadeva instead of being offended at the picture said that the artist would have thrown the paintbrush away instead of making it inauspicious by putting it inside his mouth. So, he had to curse him and his community by declaring that they would neither be Hindus nor Muslims. They would have to perform Muslim religious rites and paint stories from Hindu pantheons. The artist must not be known by their religion as said by most of the Patuas, but their artwork and the art is their sole religion. Interestingly, the Patua community being unorthodox in their religious austerity enjoyed greater acceptance in both communities. Many of the Patuas till date uh, moved from door to door reciting the oration and unfolding their painted scrolls to earn their daily living. They hold in their mind the obligation to inject moral principles for the betterment of the society. It is an observation by many that they visit common houses during the midday and afternoon when the male members of the household are usually away for work. So, the target group remains the women members of the household and most of the popular stories are therefore aimed at strengthening their moral character. The concept of virtue and vice, good and bad, moral and seen are assimilated with the notion of faith and fear reward and punishment, possibilities after death and hence in the next life. Female characters in the stories are compulsorily entitled to grave punishment for committing a scene whereas, the moral character of men as a topic is carefully avoided in most cases. With the changing times and expression, Presently, the feminist subject matters are getting more important. Guru Sadadat writes, the form of Bengal's generalized Hindu religion is quite separate from the scriptural religion devoted only to Brahma. The eternal independent imaginative Bengali soul could not conform to fixed regulation set up by a scripture while performing religious rites and creating images for deities. Rather, the Bengali Patuas have formed and molded the images of deities according to their own imagination and expression. As a result, Bengal has its own forms of Rama, Sita, Lakshmana, Shiva and Durga they bear no similarity to their original mythological forms. There is a sense of localization that characterizes folk paintings. In a painted scroll from Bengal, Rama and Sita's wedding ceremony would always be shown similar to Bengali wedding, whereas the same character from Madhubani would follow the local norms. There are mentionings of stories. Uh, that was also very beautifully written by the articles of K. G. Subramaniam, where the story uh, revolves uh, on the issue of Shiva and uh, his uh, beautiful wife Parvati. Parvati was young, beautiful and the daughter of a very rich man who is the Himalaya, the mountain, very powerful. And she was married to Shiva who was almost a beggar. He was ignorant of all material need in the whole world and he used to move like a recluse. 
Uh, so it was a mismatch of some sort, but they shared great love and respect between them. So it was one instance when Parvati demands a pair of conch from his husband Shiva and uh, Shiva did not have money to bring that. But he was willing to get that and Parvati got angry and left home. And it was a story where Shiva comes and uh, tries to please uh, uh, Parvati in disguise of uh, a female. And the story was very fascinating. What we get to see there is the use of conch shell that is the conch shell bangles that is uh, like a common uh, ritualistic uh, part of the Bengali household where the married woman in Bengali community wears those bangles. It is a sign of their marriage. But this is very interesting to see that every time we get to see certain visuals, we see that there is a localization about it. Whereas when we see in Madhubani painting, we see that uh, Sita who belongs to that place, Mithila. Uh, in the story and also in reality they, they, they try to establish many evidences where there are temples of Sita and she is the daughter of that particular zone and she wears a very different costume than the Sita in Bengal whereas the two states are almost adjoining, they are very close to each other but culturally they are very different. So there had been some kind of an effort to preserve the regional identity and it was more like uh, a cultural preservation that they maintained throughout. They did not want it to go out. There had been some confinement into the uh, style, but the texts were connected because the sources were common. It just got localized uh, and uh, it, it, it also became very rich and various uh, through the imagination, the high imaginative uh, capacities of its painters.